into the idea of correlation. So in past videos, we talked about exploring a data file just by looking around, by using some pivot tables, or by creating some functions. And so we could, for example, use formulas and functions to understand the average age of employees in our file, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, the min and the max. But usually you aren't just wanting to describe the data that you have. Usually you're wanting to put it into the context with something else. One of the more common ways that we are typically looking at data is to understand how two things might relate to each other. And so this might be when you can use something like correlation in order to look to see whether or not there's a pattern or relationship where two variables tend to move together. Maybe as one thing increases, the other increases as well, or as one thing increases, the other decreases. Uh, the former being what we'd call a positive relationship and the latter being a negative correlation. Now in Excel, you can very quickly and easily get to this notion of a correlation how much does one variable correlate with another variable? And there is a very simple formula already built into Excel for doing that. And just like we did before, we can go to an empty cell in our data set, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click in one here, and we can do the equal sign, which is what we do before any formula. And if you happen to know that it's called Corel, you could start to type and you'll see that Excel fills it in. If you didn't know the function, you can go to the insert function key and use the dialog box to search for the term correlation and it will pull it up. Now this function that's in here, Corel, I'm going to type it and then I'm going to do open parentheses. Uh, it does use what's known as the Pearson correlation and really this is best suited for two sets of continuous data meaning numerical data that can continue on. Uh, and even though it's not really meant for rank order or Likert type data, you will see a lot of people use it for that as well too. But for this example, we'll go ahead and do equals corral, open parentheses. That's our normal format that we might follow for any formula. And then it wants array one. That means where is your first data set? located and it wants all the data points that you plan to use. So in this case, we want to use all the data points of age. We want to correlate age with something else. Uh, we happen to know that the range for this data starts at A2, so column A, second row, because the first row just has the word age for a title there. And then it goes all the way down to row 1,471. Now with just that there, A2 colon A1471, and close parentheses, if I hit the enter button, uh, for one, I will get a uh, error. And the reason for this error is that I've entered too few arguments. Now that's because I can't do a correlation of age itself because what am I correlating it to? I need to correlate it to another variable. So this is when your own logic and understanding of what you're looking for or trying to understand comes into play. So in this particular example, I need to pick a second array. So after my age data, I would do a comma and then I would need to tell Excel where the second set of data lies. Now for this example, I'm going to say that I hypothesize or I have a question about whether or not age has anything to do with how far an individual might be willing to commute for their work, at least in my company. So I might decide that the second array of data that I would like to select is this column F, distance from home. And if I can do the same grab and select 
feature. And again, I can uh, go ahead and type it in if I happen to know what they are. I can say that it's F2, column F, row two, because I skipped the, the title, colon, last row. Now, what this is doing is it's saying, take all the inputs that I have for age and match them to all the inputs that I have for distance from home and find out if it's correlation. Now, the very, very important thing about doing this is this data has to already be connected to each other in some way. So this last row, 1471, has to be the same person in terms of their age listed here and their distance from home there. So you can't use two completely different data sets. I can't use a data set about age from the HR team and then try to connect it with distance from home from the R&D team. No, the data points have to be related to each other. So for example, different questions from the same survey about the same person uh, and things of that nature. So because of the way this data set is laid out, that is the case. Each row is a new individual with their details provided. So I can go ahead and select it and press enter and it will provide me with a correlation coefficient, meaning how much does the uh, variation between age and distance from home tend to move together. And in this case, we got a really small number. You'll see up here that when you click in the cell, it's still just showing the formula, but that after we hit enter, we got an actual value. So the value is negative 0 0.00168612. Now the way that correlation works is it can be any number from negative one to positive one. And a negative one would mean a very strong negative correlation. A negative doesn't mean bad. It just means that as one variable goes up in numerical value, the other variable goes down in numerical value. So for example, as age increases, distance from home decreases. And a positive number, that would have meant that as age increases, so does the distance that an employee lives from home. <clears throat> now, in our case, it is a negative number, but it is very close to zero. When you have a value that's zero, that is interpreted as really no relationship at all. So a negative one is a very strong negative correlation. A positive one is a very strong positive correlation. And anything close to zero is basically no relationship at all. So in our case, we're seeing that there's not really a relationship between somebody's age and how far they happen to live from their work location, which isn't totally surprising. Uh, and this is one way that we can check for whether or not there might be a relationship. Now, there are other ways to get to correlation in Excel. You can use the data analysis tool pack and run a correlation. And you can also use simple linear regression to get not only a correlation value, but also some more information, which I typically prefer to do that way. So if you wanna check out correlation and simple linear regression in Excel, there's a next video for you on that one.